So at this point, um, we've got something going on with that internet browser, and I noticed something on mine, and I also want to get your opinions. Uh, I'm I'm loading up my project, and I'm trying to load up the the directions. So can you just confirm if you go get directions? Raise your hand if it works. If it does show the map like it used to. So it does work on yours on your virtual device or real your real device okay and anyone else does the map work it works on yours also on your real device huh. so on my real device it doesn't seem to load up now I'm using Wi-Fi are you using Wi-Fi or are you using your own your own and then yourself on Wi-Fi, okay. Is it so? None of you are using your own AT and T or Verizon or whatever. No. Okay. So, what about anyone else? Did you get the map to work on your device? Yours too. And are you on our Wi-Fi? Hmm. Okay. I'm not exactly sure. It's not loading up on mine. It's not loading up on my virtual device either. Um, I have to do a little bit more research. So, it does working for some of us. I don't know. There's a lot of variables there. We have different versions of Android and such. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to automatically take you to the address that we've specified before. What about get directions? Does that work for you guys as well? Get directions. Okay. I'm not sure what to say about it. Not working for some of us. I have to do some more research to see what's going on. But if it works for some of us, that's good enough for the moment. Although sometimes good enough is not good enough, but it's good enough for the moment. What I want to deal with now is customizing our project. I want to change the color scheme. I want something more unique for my own style. I also want to talk about changing the font. The font right now is a very generic font that actually we never really set, but it looks like some basic um, sans serif font, and I'll explain what that means later. So I want to spend some time customizing at the moment. Colors, fonts, and that sort of thing. Because overall it works. It still needs to do more things, but I want to spend some time to customize it. So this is going to require editing some CSS. What's really cool though is we have a shortcut again. We have a shortcut to define the style, the look of our project very quickly. So go ahead and open your web browser and we'll go over to jQueryMobile.com. Remember that's the site where we learn about how jQuery Mobile works, but it also has a very cool, very easy drag and drop feature to customize the color of our site. At the top bar we've got demos, downloads, API documentation, themes. Let's go to the themes section of jQuery Mobile. And under themes, we've got the we've got the theme roller. It's a very cool drag and drop interface. First, it says welcome. That's nice. Get rolling. So you've got these these themes. We, we haven't dealt much with it, but if you recall, we have one of our jQuery mobile properties is data theme equals. We have A, B, C, D, etc. So we can have 26 different color schemes, a different color scheme for different screens, different pop-ups, and all of that. All we need to define is data theme equals something. So if we have section and then data theme equals B, then it's a different color scheme. Uh, here we've got three built-in ones, and they're all the basic black and white. So this is very cool. We can just drag and drop. If you get one of these colors that's built in at the top, we can define our own, of course. But you get any color and drag it to what element you want to change. Like let's say I want a very cool red header. So my app is going to have a red header. I can drag and drop these colors. I'm just going to drop a bunch in a bunch of places just to see what happens. I'm not quite thinking about design and all of that yet, but I'm drop, dropping these colors around here. So you should just be seeing where 
what elements are available for us to edit. And I'm dragging and dropping, but I can fine-tune, because on the left side, I have then a variety of, of elements that I can edit. For example, I'm currently, it's at the top here it says I'm editing style A, or swatch A, actually they call them swatches. I have page, here's where I can set a text color. My text has a, has a simple shadow built in, and then the color behind the regular text is this green that I chose just by dragging and dropping. So if, if I drag this green here, oops, I missed this green here, it changes there. Or I can drag it over here to these boxes as well. This is very nice. Um, there's my text color. Let's say I want a completely different color. I'm not regarding any sort of styles at the moment. I don't get an exact example of text color. This, uh, this body that did not change is actually text inside of a different element. This text color right here, I technically don't have an example of that text. It would be text that's outside of any of these elements. Notice I can drag and drop colors, but what I can also do is if I click on a particular uh, color box here, then I get the color palette. So on the outside, I can choose the hue, meaning the color. So let's say I want to go with orange. I didn't see anything change. Well, that's because then on the inner square, then I set its saturation. Right now, it's actually it's in the orange realm, but it's been shifted to the to the white of the to the gray. So if I shift this back to the actual orange part of the quadrant, then I'll see there's my color. And it's giving it to me in hexadecimal. The way this will work, after we take a moment to customize this, and I point out a few things, we customize this, we're going to download it, it's just going to download a CSS file. Then we attach the CSS file to our project and we have a brand new color scheme. We'll do that in a moment. So, what else can we explore here? We've got page elements, header, footer bar, so we can have different colors also just in the header. Let's see the body, that can also be changed links, buttons normal, buttons hover, buttons pressed, active state. If I want to figure out what something is, I can easily go in. Okay, what is this active state? I see a color. I'm going to change the color. Oh, I see. It's when a button is clicked, when it's active. Just like how we've got at the top of our bar, that navigation. we're editing the swatch of A, which is the default. If I never set data theme equals A, it will assume A. And therefore, I can start to create a different color scheme over here. For B. So under B, If I were to set on my various elements throughout my project data theme equals B, then that element will inherit these colors. And I have 26 of them. The default here is 3 ABC, but I can easily add more swatches up to Z. So I can have data theme equals W. I can have a variety of color palettes for a variety of screens and, and effects and so forth. But the default is A. At the top, I've got A, B, C, and I can add more. And then I can go to global. Under global, these are things that are affecting every swatch. So here's where I can go in and, and set some different fonts. Font family. Although it's not exactly how you think. It's OK, type your font. Doesn't quite make sense yet. We're going to get to that later. 
but if we if we added a font here, this would depend on does the font exist on the on the on the device. I know that these computers have a font called Chiller. So if I type the name of that font Chiller, now my font is the scary chilling font. That assumes though that that font is built into the device. So this is not the best way to add a different font. I'll show you a better way in a bit. But this is a, an old classic way of adding a font to a to a project, a web project. So I'm going to leave it as the whatever it was, sans serif, and I'll explain fonts a little bit more in a bit. What I'm also showing is corner radii. Currently they're this. If you want your corners even more round or less round, no round, lots of round, you can do that. And then as well as your buttons, these are my buttons. How much roundness do I want? A little bit, a lot of bit, whatever. Icon Currently, we've got the default with a disk, so there's my preview with a disk, without a disk. See, that's slightly different. It doesn't have that inner disk. What's the color there? box shadow, there's a little shadow that you can edit three pixels at the moment, you can say 33 pixels, you'll see more too much, but you can play with that so we have the ability then to customize our project relatively easy with a drag and drop interface I'll show you then how to add this to our project in a bit, but this is a little good time for a little segue. Again, a lot of us are, are much more comfortable with this text and, and code. We can handle that. But then we start to deal with something artistic. And notice on the left side, that hurts my eyes. I didn't think about how to really to do this, and maybe that kind of looks good to me, but I'm not a, a, a graphic designer, perhaps. So that's not a very good color palette. The one on the right uh, is falling a little bit more in line with a with an interesting color palette that doesn't clash and has some interesting highlights and so forth. So this is a bigger discussion about user interface design and graphic design, user experience. But one basic thing that I can tell you here, whatever colors you choose, always think about the duality of foreground and background. For example here, if I've got some text written on my title bar, a and B. Which of these two, A or B, which of these two is more readable? B. That's because with B, I am thinking about foreground and background. The foreground is the text. The background is the color behind it. And I'm thinking about that and also in terms of them being, uh, being opposite. The foreground is a bright color the background is a dark color. I could do vice versa with C. I could have, actually I do have that, I have a bright background color and a dark foreground color. And C is also very readable, black on white or gray. On B, I've got white on dark on blue. So again, forward, back, for, foreground, background. One should be dark, one should be light. Because my problem in A is that they're both dark and therefore very hard to read. If I didn't have this little weird drop shadow, it would be even harder to read. Uh, header, let me cut that down to zero to show you. Like that. There's nothing to delineate it, even harder to read. So I don't have enough contrast. Contrast is the concept. Contrast. Contrast between a foreground and a background. And yes, that does take time and effort and knowledge and experience to see what's a good contrast. But that's why some of the best contrast is in our printed material, black text on a white background. It's some of the best contrast, is therefore very readable. If I look at these examples of these magazines that I brought, even if you can't read them from a distance, dark background, the photo of the guy that invented the Oculus Rift, and on the front, 
foreground, light color, light and dark, contrast. Uh, same thing over here from a distance. You can see that word perfectly because light, foreground, dark background. This one's a little, it's okay still. Dark behind, light in front. Uh, this one over here is getting not so good. Dark background, dark text, but still it's grays in the background, but not dark gray and black. So there's some contrast still, not as much as these other ones. But um, the concept is always there. Look at this one. White on purple. Dark or light on dark. Right there. So I bring that up because, again here, you might not have taken any graphic design classes or have um, um, no experience in, in graphic design and such. But if you at least start to think about foreground, background, and have contrast, that'll really help. So I've got this white text on this dark background, white on dark, white on dark. Over here, dark on dark, not so readable. This I kind of did it on accident. That's also pretty readable. And the original color palettes were the ultimate contrast, dark and light. There's a um, Uh, there's a variety of, of resources online to learn a little bit about color combinations. Uh, I'll look up one a little later. I'm blanking on its name at the moment. But let's say we've designed a color scheme that I want to use. You can do one, you can do two. I'm going to have this ugly one and a better one, and then I'll show you how we can then apply it. Let's say you've got, a, you've got two good ones or one good one. That's okay. I've got two. One not so good, one good. But um, I want to then apply this to my project. I've designed it and I want to apply it to my project. Let's talk about that. This particular design that I've created on Theme Roller, if I go up to Share Theme Link, this is a direct link to always get back to this particular color scheme. If you save this somewhere, if you save this address, You'll always be able to come back to this color scheme again. There's no, there's no save. Like you can't create an account here and save it to come back to it. But if you save this link, if you email it to yourself or save it somewhere, I can always come back to that. That's just for me. I'm, I'm saving that. To actually make it work in my project, I've got download, and then later on, I can I can load the load my scheme again and continue to refine it via import. Uh, we'll get to that later, but um, in order for this to use this to use this on our project, let's click on download at the top. Yeah, there's a few things here. It's a bit confusing. Download theme. This will generate a zip file that contains both a compressed for production and uncompressed for editing version of the theme. To use your theme, add it together with the icon CSS file to the head of your page before the jQuery mobile structure file like this. So it's just saying, which in my experience, this is not the best, but what this is saying is we're going to download your, your particular theme and so in this, in this case, it's called My Custom Theme. You're going to download that and add it to the head of your document wherever you want to use it. But I'm seeing that if we add this before the built-in um, CSS, it doesn't quite work. Now, the example, though, uses something called jQuery Mobile Structure. We don't use that one. We use the, 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 the normal, the default... Um, jQuery. So that's why we're actually going to add our code after the reference to the jQuery mobile. Structure. Uh, when we, last month, when we downloaded jQuery mobile and we added it to our project, 
we could have added just the structure, which was like a, a basic skeleton of the project. We added the default, so we at least have some color. That's why here it's saying, okay, you have no color at all if you use structure only, therefore your colors will be added before. We've got a setup that we're not using structure, we're using the, the basic CSS file. So on our example, we'll add our code afterward. Which code? Well, first, at the top right, we need to give this a theme name. This is going to name the CSS file. Uh, so we'll, we'll call this my style. It can be anything we want. We'll call this my style. At the, type, at the top right to there, call that my style. And then at the bottom right, select download zip. That's going to give me a zip file. If you open your zip file, we have this index file and a themes folder in the themes folder. There's the mystyle.css file. And we have two versions of it. The uncompressed version that we're supposed to be able to open and further edit if we need to fine-tune things in Notepad, which um, then also gives us the MyStyle minified version, the compressed version. The version that is supposed to be ready to deploy, that it's going to be faster in our project. And if we uh, edited different aspects of our icon, we have this icon file. So what we need to do is we need to copy over Let's try it first this way. We'll copy over the mystyle.min.js file. We'll copy that into our project folder. So I've got my project folder on the right side. This is the mystce project. There it is there. I've got the zip file open. I'm going to drag my style into the project folder. Drag that over. And then we'll go to our index file and we will put in a line of code that references that CSS file. So back to Notepad back to the index file. <clears throat> Let's go to the very top and we will add this. Let's go to line 23. I've got an empty line there. Line 22 has the, the default jQuery mobile style. Line 23 is empty. Line 25 has some custom CSS. So what I want to do is I want to load up these colors I designed in Theme Roller, add them to my project, and then if I have other things that I want to override, that's when the Kodika external file comes in. So just to save me some effort, I'm going to copy line 25 and paste it in line 23 so that then I can point it to my style dot min dot css line 23 I add that line A very quick time saver is I could load up the project in the web browser. It won't be fully functional, but I just want to check the color palette came through. I'm just checking it very quickly in the web browser. Run Firefox, like we used to do last month. Um, and then we load it up in the web browser. The reason I loaded it up in the web browser is I haven't addressed something. These colors look amazing, except in the get directions. You need to add that there as well. 
So before we, we take this to our, back to our before we take that back to our um, emulators and such. Okay, well we're going to need that line of code, line 23. We're going to need that in the dir file, or else that will also look like the basic black and white, black and gray project. So we'll jump over to dir, and on that uh, we've got line 21. And now if I take a quick look in the web browser, it also has the, the color palette. Well, in my case, remember I said I have two color palettes, A and B. They both automatically got A because I never specified. Just for fun, let's say I want the Get Directions screen to use my B color theme. In the DIR file, I can specify section anywhere within the tag that I usually like to leave the ID as the last item. Doesn't matter, but I'm going to add this before data dash theme. This is lines 116 equals B. So now this section will use the B theme. Data dot data dash theme equals B. And I have 26 of them if I chose to create that many. So I'm saying this section will use data theme B. Technically, I could target it down to the particular article or even the particular div and say this one field contain element could have data theme B. Everything else could be using A, and just this element could use B. But I'm saying the whole section use B, and the colors will be inherited. They'll trickle down to the rest of the content on this page. There it is. So theme B. Now I want to see how that looks uh, in my emulators and devices. So I'm going to load that up just to see that. So now even though that we've all got the same basic app, here you have a you have the opportunity to customize it um, in your own style, at least choosing these this color palette. And then adding it to the project is relatively easy. It's just a, a reference to a style sheet. And we have the functionality inside of um, jQuery Mobile to set different data themes when we, when we want to.
All right, so you can probably see from a distance this blinding red color of my, of my app. And then if I go over to the DIR, you'll see the, the blues and the purples and the red. And on my virtual device, eventually I'll see that as well. But there we go, I customized my colors. I would then take a moment to, to fully test it to see if these colors do work, because I see it, it, it looks a little bit odd. In my case, in my DIR file, I, I love the colors more of my B theme than my A theme, but I do see when I try to get directions and I see those list of color, I mean, those list of directions, they, it's a dark color on a dark background, so I would have to fix that. Here it is. So it's loading up in my virtual device. There's my very round buttons. And I can go in about, get directions, and there's the blue and purple. Yeah, something else is also going on with, with this map. I'm not exactly sure, so and that's something I need to look into at the moment. So I, I, I don't think I have a good answer to fix that just yet. Now, um, the project, I, I changed the colors and such, but let's say actually, well, it would look better if that, I've got a gray here, and that's a little hard to read. I, I want white just like that. I have a couple of ways to address this. We, we added the mystyle.min CSS file which is editable by Notepad, but not as much as you would think. So if you open that up and look at it, there's some stuff to edit. But then at the very, very end, line 217, it's a long, long line that goes on and on and on and on. So that min file is not the best file to work with if you're going to further refine your style. Because in this long line over here is where all of those details are. There's border color. This is unreadable. So I took from my zip file, remember we had mystyle.min.css, we also had mystyle.css. I dragged this over just to look at it, mystyle.css in Notepad, and then, then this one is the one that is fully uncompressed with indentation and readability, and now it's down here to 747 lines. So this uncompressed version is great for me to go back and make more changes. And there's some good documentation within it with comments. Here's the button when it's visited. Here's the button when it's up. In colors, here's a background color, etc. So the uncompressed version is really good for us to continue to refine our color palette. There's the font, so there's the font size, 100%. Uh, what does it look like when it's attached to a label? There's the corner rounding. Now the issue is, okay, I've got in my HTML, I've got a reference to the min CSS file instead of the uncompressed CSS file. So if I wanted to use the uncompressed file, I just change my HTML to point to that one. In our case, this is not so much, not so much as a big difference. The compressed version is 19 kilobytes. The uncompressed is six, 26 kilobytes. So it's seven kilobytes. 
but there are some things that are much larger and so when they're minified they're more compact you have to decide if you want to use the minified or unminified. I'm going to keep the minified version and if I do that then what I would need to do is I would need to go back to the theme roller and here make the changes and then download it again and replace the one that's not right. So two work two workflows one is is work with the raw CSS file in your project or one or the other is in a more visual way edit in theme roller and then download the, the code again and reapply it. So for example, that, that white color was, was hard to read on my device right here. And that's part of the the page text color. It was a gray, and so I've made it pure white. That'll be easier to read now. And in my case, I would download this again. It already knows the name of my CSS file, so I would just download. It gives me a brand new My Style, which I then would replace. It gives me a brand new My Style.min, which I would replace on my current project. Yes, I would replace that since my code is already correct and then I've got the nice bright white So that's why I also want to make sure I save. I click share and I save that link. Because if I, this has happened to me where I download the zip file and I only keep the minified CSS file and I deleted the whole zip file. Well, then I never, I also never saved my link back to theme roller here. And so then I have to struggle a little bit because I have the minified version of my CSS file to edit a couple of colors. If I had only saved this link, I could always come back to it, make those edits, download it, and then I've updated my, my color scheme. So taking a look in the web browser, I see that that, that, that worked. We're going to take one more break. When we come back, we'll talk about let's change the font. I'm kind of tired of this font. I want to look at what other fonts I have, and we'll be able to look at a whole world of fonts. So it's 7.52. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 8.02. We'll go on. <laughs>